Every day of our life, there's an area where we choose or we refuse. Everyone say choose, choose. or refuse. refuse. Every day, you are making decisions of choosing or refusing. Every day, no matter what's going on, the enemy will challenge you. He will tempt you. The reality, again, here is that all influence comes from the unseen realm. That's called the presence of evil. The earth is filled with demonic forces. The Bible says that God, through Satan and his third of his angels, out of the third heaven, sent them into the earth and its atmosphere. And now we know that after Adam was ruler, and Satan deceived them, and Satan became ruler again. Not that he owns anything, <laughs> but he has authority and rules. But he rules over people that are deceived. Deception is Satan's greatest weapon. And it will always be his greatest weapon. Again, deception causes people to make wrong choices because many people are led by how they feel and any person that's always led by how they feel will always make a wrong choice because what's happening is they're not aligning themselves with the word of God so they can at least discern what pleases God and they're not connecting themselves with God's presence so that there isn't any guidance by the spirit Again, many people have the right words, but the wrong presence. They can say all kinds of things. Even Satan can quote the scriptures from cover to back and whatever. And say the right things. That's how he deceives people. But you and I are to judge by fruit. I am definitely a fruit inspector. And there's nothing wrong with about being a fruit inspector. We should be fruits inspectors. Amen. You judge people by the fruit. Not that we're bringing criticism or judgment on them. But first you must judge yourself by your own fruit. You've got to look to see who's in your mirror. Before you can look to see who's in anyone else's. That's why Jesus said, take the national grand forest out of your eye. Before you take the tree trunk out of someone else's. Amen. Amen. And Joshua 24. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Oh, happy day. In his presence. Fire. Yes. In his presence. Uh, Joshua 24 and verse 14. Let's speak it together. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Okay, everybody can go home now. <laughs> Serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt serve the Lord. Now for me and you, the other side is your past. Amen. Amen. Verse 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Ammonites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the people answered and said, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Now they had the right words. <laughs> Amen. For the Lord our God 
is he who brought us and out and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, which is bondage, from the house of bondage, who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Ammonites, who dwelt in the land. We also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you what? If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. Oh, this is powerful. People have no idea what the end result is going to be with their lives. Because, see, they just live by their emotions and, and make decisions, never seeing the end result. And the reason why people don't see the end result is because they are disconnected from the presence of God. I'm going to share that again. The reason they cannot see the end result is because they are disconnected from the presence of God. Now, this may sound strange to you, and here's the conclusion. They have no relationship. Does everybody get it? There re really is no relationship. The word says God is spirit. So we have relationship with him in the spirit. It's not about how much you know the Bible. You can have a relationship with the letter and never meet the presence. And that's what he wants. That's why he said the letter kills, but the spirit brings what? Life. Verse 21. And the people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. So Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Now, therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods. What can be a foreign god to a person? Themselves. That's the number one foreign god. Why? Because when you are supposed to be a new believer, a new creation, your old man should be a foreign god to you. Now, therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, what does he say? The Lord our God, we will what? Serve, Serve and his voice we will <coughs> obey. So Joshua made a what? Covenant with a people that day and made for them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Then Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone, set it up there under the oak, and that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness to us, for it has what? It has heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, each to his own inheritance. Here we are. We have, are in a position always to choose or refuse. Amen? Everything that you and I, in our life, we are, have a position of choosing life with Christ and refusing the enemy or refusing the life of Christ and choosing a life of evil. Every day, every decision you and I make, again, I want to re-emphasize. This is where religious garbage comes in. Because people think that they know God because they know the word of God. Even Jesus rebukes them, and we'll come to that. Just because you know the word doesn't mean you know him. The word of God should always lead you to him. But see, people stop short and live on intellect thinking that they know God when God is far from them. Why? Because they can speak the right things, 
but the presence is wrong. Is everybody okay? Deuteronomy 30. Let me share this with you. I know that in my own life, I did multiple things wrong. Sinned like crazy. I repented many times. But I could never stop. Because I was connected to the wrong presence. Does everybody get it? I might have had good intentions. I might have wanted to be free. I might have wanted to do the right thing. But because I was not connected to the right presence, I couldn't. Even when the Spirit convicted me and I repented, He wanted me to come deeper. See, it's the same thing. In other words, people are always looking at the area to where, in other words, okay. So, whatever a man sows, he what? Reaps. So when you repent, amen, when you repent, nothing truly stops until you turn. So you can say, I'm sorry, and still do the same thing. You're still reaping. Amen? Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Let's speak it. See, I've set before you today what? Life and what? And good or what? Death and evil. Well, you have to be a plumb nut, which one to serve here. In that I command you today to what? To love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your hearts turn away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. Again, Crossing over is an area where you have A.D. and B.C. He says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him. I'm going to say cling to him. Cling to him is being connected to him. That's where you are connected to his presence. He says, you hold on to me, I'll hold on to you. You let go of me, I'm letting go of you. Amen. Oh, that you may, oh, that you may, verse 20, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him. For he is your what? Oh, that should be reality to every born again believer that this is your life. And without it, there is no life. Without his presence, without his life, we have no life. And the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and give them. Now, I want you to know these are covenant promises to God and for, for me and you. Because we receive the blessings of Abraham. Amen? It's all granted to me and you. But again, without being connected, I, 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 I could preach this every single day of my life until I leave. Because it seems like the world is disconnected, but many believers don't get it. And they call themselves believers. They don't get it. We are to choose life and goodness and not death and evil. We're to refuse death and evil. We are to refuse the ways of the world. 
We are to choose the presence of God over everything in our life. That should be the number one because only in his presence is fulfillment and satisfaction. Amen. When people are not satisfied, it's because they're disconnected. Second Corinthians, now let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2.20. Thank you, Jesus. I'm with you again because the Spirit keeps reminding me He's getting ready to do something phenomenal. And He's trying to get His people in a place of position. He keeps telling me this. And many are going to miss it because they haven't been positioned. Remember, positioning is everything. Being connected with God's position. Being connected with His presence. Being aligned with His Word. 2 Timothy 2, 20. Somebody there? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Let's speak it. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay. Some for what? Some for honor and some for dishonor. Anybody in here want to be a vessel of dishonor? Well, that's good. Verse 21. Therefore, what? If anyone cleanses himself from the letter, now this is powerful. If anyone steps away, disconnects himself from the old man, from the old presence, it says here, he will be a vessel of honor. That is the only way to become a vessel of honor. Sanctified, which means separated unto the Lord. You can only be separated unto the Lord if you're connected to his presence. You can try and do it in your own strength and it just doesn't work. And useful for the master, prepared for every good what? Good every good work. So what are you choosing then? You are choosing life and goodness, aren't you there? What? Producing good works. Those are known as good fruits. Verse 22. Flee therefore also youthful lusts, but pursue what? Righteous. Righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Out of a what? Pure a pure heart. Cleanse ourselves from the old man, the fallen nature, so that you and I may enter into a place of what we call the power of new or the power of a new creation. See, there's power in the new. God is a God who does everything new. He said, I do a new thing, remember? Why? And power, when he says new, power's there. Every time. Verse 23 says, do this though. Because this will disconnect you. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Why? It will disconnect us from his presence. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle and able to teach. Able to what? teach. Every one of us is called to be a teacher. While you're in this room, you should be preparing in you. How can I teach what I'm hearing today? That's how I live my life. No matter where I go, no matter what service I go to, no matter what's going on, I don't care who's preaching, what's what, or who's teaching. I am there taking notes going, how can I teach what I'm learning today? Why? Because I am looking beyond the physical, knowing my father is speaking. And when my father speaks, I want to listen, and I want to share what he says. Without that desire, then you have to ask yourself, do I truly have a connection with his presence, and do I truly have a relationship? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle, able to teach, patient, which means endure, in what? Humility, humbleness, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, 
and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. How many know God is in the business of rescue? Amen. He's always trying to make an escape. Look at just because you got rescued once doesn't mean you don't need rescuing again. <laughs> Hello. Over and over and over. Dad loves to rescue his people. He loves it. But he likes even greater is that you see what he sees. That's his greatest joy. Amen. So he doesn't have to keep rescuing our blessed assurance. Oh, hallelujah. So if we cleanse ourselves when we're old, we will walk in the power of the new. Amen. Second Corinthians 5. <laughs> Man, I just got the joy to law all over me today, I'm telling you. <laughs> Glory. When you connect in God's presence, you got joy. Amen. And then again, you get to meet Phyllis and overflow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5.16. Are we there? Choose or refuse. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. That means works to the flesh. But it also means something else. In the physical. Even though we have known Christ in the, according to the physical, he calls it flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Now let me explain a little bit about this. We regard no one according to the works of the flesh or the physical realm. Why? Because you and I now see through the physical realm into the spiritual realm. If you're a walking believer, spirit-filled, you don't just rely on what you see. You no longer do that. The only way you, you see, you are seeing through the physical and seeing into the spirit realm. And as God releases vision to you, those are the things that you see. Hallelujah. All right, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if he's in the eternal presence and power of God Almighty, if he's connected, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Why? Because you've got a new divine nature. You have a new character. You're brand spanking new. And in, in this place of newness, you have power. It's called the power of new. And in this, there, there's anointing there. There's a love there. It's different. Everything is different. You see differently. You hear differently. You walk differently. Your desires are different. Amen. And you'll do everything you can to prevent yourself from going backwards and keep going forward. Remember he said, one thing I do is count it all rubbish and garbage, the things of my past for the knowledge and revelation and the presence of God. Remember, Paul was taken up to the third heaven. I had visitations from the Lord. Desires, desires. There should be a desire in every one of us to have a visitation. Lord, visit me today. Lord, reconnect me today. Don't let, uh, take not your Holy Spirit from me. I need to have your presence. Without your presence, I'm nothing, nothing. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to him, what? When it says reconciled him to himself, it means reconciled him to his presence. Through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So we're trying to get everybody connected to the presence of God. Amen. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of what? Reconciliation. We are trying to get people connected to God's presence. You know, it's, let me share this with you. You go out and lead someone to the Lord, right, and give them a Bible. They don't even know what to do with it. Oh, here's a Bible. What happened? 
But I'll tell you, you bring them in God's presence. And you know what they're going to say? Where's the Bible? It's different. Where's the Bible? Why? I want to know more. Why? The word now becomes food. It's not just something to read. It becomes food to you. And his presence becomes drink to you. And I love the drink. I'm an addict to his presence. Glory to God. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 20. Now then we are what? Ambassadors, Ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now when it says reconciled to God, how does that mean? To his presence. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Wow. Again, regard no one according to the works of the flesh or physical realm. Why? Because we see through the physical and the spiritual. We recognize. That's the only way you can recognize the influence that's influencing you. You know what? When something comes, in, comes as a temptation, first thing you're going to ask yourself is, who told me that and where'd you come from? Who told me that and where'd you come from? If you're, not, if you're, if, if you're disconnected from God's presence, you are not even going to think that. You're just going to go, Ugh. okay, and do it. Amen? And then you got to look at yourself. Where, where that is not happening, there really isn't a relationship. I, I'm telling you, i got a lot of people all the time telling me, I know Jesus. I think because they saw his picture on the wall one day. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy that hung on the cross for me and you. But do you really know him? You can read about him and never meet him. You can have an image, but never meet him. You meet him in his presence. When somebody comes to your house, they bring their presence, don't they? Now, if they stay outside and you never open the door and you talk to them, same thing when you're talking to somebody on the phone. Hey, man, what's going on? They're still not in the house. It's different. We want Jesus in the house. But we want him in this house. In this house. It starts here first. Amen. Jesus is in the house. When Jesus shows up, everything flees. Oh, glory. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17. Let's speak it together. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. We are no longer Gentiles. Does everybody understand that? Okay. In the fertility of their mind, having their understanding what? Darkened. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, which feeling is associated with emotion, having given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, you've not so learned Christ, which Christ here is God's eternal presence, power, and truth. So they not learn God's presence. These are called works of disconnect. What are you saying? He said, man, there's no understanding. They're dark. Why? Because they're disconnected. Verse, and he says, you've not so learned Christ. Verse 21, if indeed you have heard him and have now been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you do what? Put off concerning your former conduct. That's B.C., the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed. How are you going to get renewed? Connect with God's presence. And the spirit 
in the spirit, that's his presence, of your mind. And that you put on the what? New the new man, that's A.D., which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So, here's two fruits. When you are connected to God's presence, you will have the fruits of righteousness and what else? Holiness. Doesn't mean you walk around with a halo. Hello? But you reverence the Lord. There is a fear of Lord in you. Where you honor and respect him. Are you ready? Here we go. These are works of disconnect. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. Let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are neighbors of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Amen? There's nothing wrong with righteous anger. You should hate evil. You should hate sin. Right? That doesn't mean you have a right to do outbursts of anger. You don't have a right outbursts of wrath. That's how the enemy disconnects people. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. How many of you know when you give place to the devil, you get disconnected? Let him who stole steal no longer. You're a thief. You'd be disconnected. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. He also says, don't let any corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer, hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you'll get disconnected. Yeah. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Are you ready? Here's some more. These are more fruits of disconnect or works of disconnect. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. Again, you will see works of connect and works of disconnect. I see people get angry and want to fight. Boy, I'd like to slap the hell out of them, make room for heaven. But that's not what this is about. I see people get angry and they want to fight. You know why? No relationship. Because they've lost sight that Jesus is in the house. Excuse me, Lord, I need to do this. Excuse me, Lord, I need to get in the flesh. Excuse me, Lord. Sorry, Lord, but I'm about to. He's like, what? Push me out of your way. <laughs> Works of disconnect or works of connect, that's where you and I must choose or refuse. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. It's coming our way. Not a flesh anointing, fresh anointing. <laughs> Proverbs 1, 28. Let's speak it together, please. Then they will call me, says the Lord, but I will not answer them. They will seek me diligently, but they are not going to find me. Because they what? Because they what? Hated they hated knowledge. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. Ooh. They hated knowledge and didn't choose the fear of the Lord. Remember, we must align ourselves with the word of God, which is knowledge. But we must be connected to the presence of God. They did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel. 
and despise my every rebuke. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with full of their own fantasies. For turning away of the simple will slay them. And the complacency, people become complacent, of fools will destroy them. That's where you must be consistent, not complacent. How many of y'all know we are reaching a critical time? We are in critical times right now. It is critical. Very, very critical. In verse 33, And whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of what? Evil. He says no one's going to get an answer, <laughs> and they're not going to find him. Why? Because they reject the Lord's counsel. And they refuse to fear the Lord. It is a state of disconnect where there is no longer a relationship, even though in a person's own mind, they still have relationship. But God has distanced themsel himself from them. Why? Because there's no answer. Well, there's no answer. There's no... Now it's, God answers everything. Yes and no. <laughs> it's real simple. And when there's a not answer, you can be sure one way or another, that it's coming or you missed it. <laughs> I see many people come for counsel, but then they, don't, then, then they come back over and over and over for counsel, because, but they haven't accepted the first one. And this is where he says, because they reject my counsel. Well, he's saying, man, accept my counsel and quit refusing it. And you'll find your life change. Remember, our life is dependent on him. Nothing else. No man can give you life. No job, no amount of money, nothing. No doctor. Only he can. Amen? In John 15. Only Jesus can bring us life, and life abundantly. Hallelujah. Verse 1, John 15, verse 1. Let's speak it. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me, now who's the branch? We are. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Welcome to the pruning. Why do you need to be pruned? That you may bear more fruit. That means you're going to get a little crushed. You are already clean, clean because of the word which I have spoken to you, but you will not escape the pruning. He says, abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Listen, God is able to remove everything in your life that is unclean and displeasing to him. He's able to do it. You and I should be doing self-deliverance every single day. Amen? Every day. And maintain that. That's what he says, continue. He said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Well, for without me you can do nothing. And if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my what? And my what? Words. My words <laughs> abide in you. You will ask what you desire, and it will be done for you. Why? Because you're going to ask according to his will, not our fleshly desires. By this my Father is glorified. When? When you bear much fruit. What kind of fruit is that? That's fruits of connect. 
fruits that, why? Because they're fruits that you are connected with God's presence. So you will be my what? Disciples. Abide in him. Works, or what we call fruits, of disconnect to his presence or disconnect from fruits. This is where you and I must have relationship. Where there's no relationship, it's a false relationship. Why? People think they have a relationship, but the enemy uses deception to cause people to believe they have a relationship when they really don't. Because they know a page number and a scripture. That's not relationship. You will know relationship by fruits of individuals. Whether it's fruits of connect or if it's fruits of disconnect. One of the things you'll always find out, who trusts him? Who trusts him? In his presence, you will always trust him. Now, I'm not saying that you won't think worse first, but you'll knock it down right away. It comes. Remember, the old man usually speaks first. Hello? You were waiting for God to speak. You want to be led by his spirit. And Colossians chapter 3. Choose or refuse. You're going to choose God or you're going to refuse him. You'll choose righteousness or you'll refuse it. Or you'll choose God and refuse the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians 3. Is everybody there? Oh, glory. In verse 1, we're going to read this together. Colossians 3, verse 1. It's on page... I can't tell you. I don't know. I know it's on mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody turn to that page yet? <laughs> Good. Verse 1, let's speak it. <clears throat> if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Now, that's where we focus. Look, if you're seeking those things that are above, then you're, everything you're doing, you're going, is this going to please the Lord or displease him? What do you think? Why? Because you're connect if you're connected, everything comes from heaven first. Amen? If you're connected, everything comes from the future first. If you're disconnected, everything comes from the past to the present or from the present to the present. But when you're connected, you're always looking. Why? Because you're looking to bring the things. He said, let thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Well, we're trying to bring the kingdom down. We're trying to bring the kingdom in this realm. So if we're seeking those things that are above, what we're trying to do is bring those things. Lord, what am I doing? Is it going to bring you in or is it going to move you out? Okay. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, set your thoughts, connect your thoughts, align your thoughts with God's word and promises on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died in your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's where your life is at. When Christ, who is our life, oh, you see that? Highlight that. Is our life. Christ is our life. Without Christ, there is no life. Christ is our life. Wow. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. But if Christ is not your life, you're not going to appear with him. You'll appear with the devil. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these things. The number one thing he says is anger, which is outbursts of wrath. Why? Because anger souls in the flesh, and then you reap corruption. This, these are fruits of disconnect. Anger, wrath, 
malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. So lying is a disconnect. And have put on a new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew nor circumcision nor uncircumcised barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Wow, these are fruits of connect, aren't they? Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you should also must do so. But above all these things, put on love, which is a bound of perfection, and let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be what? Thankful. Now, let the word of Christ, which should dwell in us richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Powerful. In other words, we should choose his way. Everything that is. We should choose it. We should seek his way. There should always be an end result of everything that you and I do, but we should always see it through. Again, if we don't see it through every decision, then we're not connected. Connection is everything. He said, I reconcile. What reconcile? You know, when a child is reconciled, you know what happens? They hug. Presence to presence. That's what dad does with us. Oh, glory. Psalm 25. Psalm 25. Glory. Oh, happy day. When Jesus won. I don't want to drive anybody out, so I'll stop. <laughs> Psalm 25. It's a good day to die. <laughs> this is a great day to die to yourself. People, man, he's a cult. Did you hear what he said? We live in a cul-de-sac, not a cul-de-sac. Man, I'll never forget, we were doing a newsletter once, and a guy put in, a, in there a cul-de-sac. Gosh, we get some slack on that one, man. <laughs> Verse 1, Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Come on, pray this. Oh, my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let my enemies triumph over me. And do not let my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those who be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and loving kindness, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. What a wonderful prayer. Saying, choose humility, right? God, go, go to verse 8. God, and I mean, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he what? Guides in justice. And the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. To such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Are you able to keep his covenant and testimonies without being connected to his presence? No. You may know the word. 
But the presence is what brings you power. That's why Jesus was the word who became flesh, right? Did he go out and cast devils out? Not until when? The Spirit of the Lord came on him. Presence. He got reconnected. Does everybody get it? He says, for your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is a man that fears the Lord? Him he will teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. What a prayer. Choose humility. Refuse pride. Choose forgiveness. Refuse offense. You know, if we we'll start doing the right thing and choosing the right things and refuse the right things, things will change. We'll stay positioned. In John chapter 5. Oh, glory. John chapter 5. Verse 37. John 5, 37. And Jesus said, The Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to what? Come to me that you may have life. Now, he was speaking to the Pharisees and Sadducees who knew the scriptures. He said, yeah, man, you knew the word, but you don't know me. You may be connected with the word of God, but you're not connected to my presence. And I've come to reconcile you so that you may connect to my presence and carry my presence. He rebuked them. Oh, you know the scriptures, but you won't come to me to get it, to get connected. Does everybody understand that? Oh, that's why he's, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And the result is I am the life. And without him, you and I have no life. In 1 John chapter 5. Glory. 1 John chapter 5. Are you getting this? Oh, hallelujah. In verse 9, 1 John 5, chapter, uh, verse 9. I got a bunch more scriptures, but we'll go to one more after this and seal it. Man, I'm telling you, I could go all day on it. Did you bring a lunch? We'll just have to drink again. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Amen. Verse 9, let's speak it. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has a witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. In other words, the word believe means to what? Follow. People can say, I believe, but they don't follow. Then they really don't believe. God says, you're a liar. You're not, you say you believe me, but you won't follow me. Again, when he showed up to the disciples, what did he say? He didn't say, believe me. He said, what? Follow me. He said, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Verse 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life. And this life is where? In his son. 
He has, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue, 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 continue to follow and believe in the name of the Son of God. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. And if anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, slap him. He will ask and he will forgive his Give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. But there is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. In other words, you need to go tackle him. Verse 17. All unrighteousness is what? Sin. And there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. He doesn't associate with the presence of evil, which is sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself from the presence of evil and keeps him connected to the presence of God. And then the wicked one can't touch him. People wonder why they're struggling. Because they got disconnected. You know, did you ever, you know, it's like something plugged in. Right? And they got an extension cord. And somebody walks by by mistake and actually kicks the cord and it gets disconnected. Then there's no flow from the fan. Right? So many times people by ignorance disconnect themselves and don't even realize that they have. And they're saying that they're believing and they're still going through the motions, but there's been a disconnect from God's presence. Because eventually that fruit starts to fade and begins to replace itself with the fruits of disconnect instead of the fruits of connect. Amen? Verse 19. It says that we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols that will disconnect you. And I'm going to close at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Choose or refuse. You either choose them or refuse them. That's why God says submit to God and resist the devil. Because you're choosing to submit to God, then you'll be able to resist the devil. You're refusing the devil. Amen? But if you're not submitting to God and connecting to his presence, you can't resist the devil's temptations. Amen. It'll overtake you every time. We'll do stupid things. But thank God for his mercies and grace. Amen? He's always willing to forgive us as soon as we blow it. As soon as, but the more you practice it, the less you do it. Amen? Until it becomes perfected and mastered. That's reaching the third level, the master's level. And this ain't no golf tournament. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. This is the will of God. Your sanctification, your separation, which means your connection with him. That you should obtain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? 
holiness. Therefore, he who rejects or refuses, this does not reject or refuse man, but God, who has given us his Holy Spirit. Powerful. Sanctification is separation unto the Lord and the connection to his presence where there are what we call righteous fruits or fruits of disconnect or fruits of connect. In other words, because we are walking now in the power of the new creation, because we are connected, we are able to submit to God and resist the devil. There is power to do this all the time. Amen? Amen. Your choice. Everyone say, my choice. My choice. To, choose to choose or refuse. Or refuse. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, today's seed be imparted in a mighty way. Grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that revelation would come to each and every one. Conviction, counsel, correction, repentance would be granted so that we turn away from those things that displease you and get reconnected to your presence, being filled, reset, refreshed, and know your love, your love, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion, and you may bring tithes and offerings up. <laughs>